Hello friends, in this video lecture, we will try to understand comparison between LZ techniques, especially LZ77 and LZ78 along with some examples. <music> Data compression means compression of data in the two form. One is one can compress the actual that means the original data. Here we can reduce the number of bits, number of characters, number of symbols present in the actual data. And this is known as lossy data compression. And second one is lossless data compression. Here one cannot lose or loss any kind of data in the actual data. That means we cannot compare or we cannot compress the original data in the form of bits, symbols or characters. Instead of that, still we can achieve the compression. How? Because here we will try to reduce the total length of the data. For example, if I want to transmit a file via Gmail, I can use a software or I can convert a file into the zip form so that the size of a complete file can easily get reduced and here the receiver can easily unzip the file so that he or she can easily get the original data as it is, that is replica of the original data. Here we are not able to reduce the original data, still we try to achieve the data compression while transmitting the data because of we try to achieve successfully the reduction in the size of the file. So in this way, this kind of compression is known as lossless compression and hence Data compression, compression it implies sending or sorting a smaller number of bits. Here we have to highlight a word smaller. Why? Because anyone who try to transmit the data, they will surely want that the minimum number of loss while the transmission of a data. Although many methods are used for this purpose, in general, these methods are divided into lossy and lossless methods. So these all things we have already seen in our last lecture. And depending on this lossy and lossless method, there are few kinds of methods which are present for the lossless compression and lossy compression that we have to see in this video lecture. So data compression, as we have already seen, lossless method and lossy method. Now try to understand lossless method can be used on text or program. How on text and program that I will try to explain you. Any program while write it down, we can use the different forms of the languages like a C, C++, Java and so on. So that program are nothing but string of characters, string of symbols and text is nothing but string of characters. So indirectly while doing the data compression using the lossless method, we must able to reduce or we must try to reduce the data in the form of text or programs. While using the data compression in the form of lossy method, we are able to do the data compression or reduction in the data on image, video, audio. Now we will see one by one. In the text or program, how many methods are there or algorithms are there which we can use for the data compression? The first one is run length, second is Hoffman and third one is nothing but Limpel Zeev. That technique we have seen in the last lecture. And in the lossy methods, the first one is JPEG, second one is MPEG and last one is MP3. We all know the format of .jpeg in the form of taking any picture. .mpeg and .mp3. .mp3 means what? Well, capturing the audio, we can save it using .mp3. So for example, if I have to take any picture and I have to upload it on Facebook or any social media, then what will that social media do? That will automatically, means that particular software will automatically try to decrease the number of pixels present in your actual image. 
so you cannot see by the open eyes or very easily the difference between your actual captured image and the posted image but yes there is a lot of difference between them in terms of pixels so like that they can achieve the data compression using lossy method why lossy method because here the number of pixels can be easily get decreases but which we cannot easily observe by our open eyes so like that there are two types of method lossless and lossy and especially in this particular video we are interested to study lempel sieve techniques so in the lempel sieve techniques first one is lz77 second one is lz78 and third one is lzw these are the types of techniques which can be classified in the lempel sieve technique algorithm so lz77 is also known as lz1 technique because firstly that particular technique was derived it is also known as sliding window technique why it is known as sliding window technique i have already explained the example in the last lecture still we will try to revise it for example this is the given code i have already told you that this kind of technique are comes under the lossless techniques and lossless techniques or lossless data compression we can easily achieve on text or a program so you can easily observe the given code is c a b r a c and so on that is what this is nothing but string of characters indirectly this is nothing but input is nothing but text so we can do the lossless compression over here so using this technique we require to first divide a string of a window size given window size into the two categories one is look ahead buffer and one is search buffer and why it is known as sliding window technique because we required to convert or to forward our every character into the next slide that means from look ahead buffer to search buffer i will try to shift every character which will be present in the look ahead buffer so like that shifting can easily done that means what slide of the window can be easily done in this particular technique and hence this technique is known as sliding window technique so we can see now the comparison between lz77 and lz78 and this is frequently asked question so first is lz77 is known as sliding window lz1 and lz77 technique second point is it is dictionary based technique why dictionary based because already a string of character that means a dictionary of a character is given to you provided to you and using that particular dictionary we try to encode the data so simply it is dictionary based technique next is it works on the past data why past data we have just seen that we require to convert our window or we have to classify our window into the search buffer and look ahead buffer and still see here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 there are only 13 bits present in a window size given window size is 13 but given code size is what 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 given code size is 19 bits that means what i can only use maximum 13 characters in a window size why because it was already provided to me but what about the last remaining 6 bits yes i must have to use it when the first 13 bits encoding will be complete indirectly when i will get complete this data encoded then this data will be known as the past data and after that whatever the last data will be present after this window that data will be known as present data so i have to compare present data with what 
past data and like this i have to go until and up till i will not get a single code word or a single character in the given string so it works on the past data the meaning of this particular statement is this third one is it is slower than 78 lz 78 algorithm and yes we have already seen the example we require a less time to solve lz 78 algorithm than that of lz 77 why because at every step i require to slide the data and i have to draw the next step and hence it is time consuming process next one is output of lz 77 is olc format we have already seen what is OLC? Offset, length, and code word. So, in this way, in the OLC format, we can write the answer of the encoded output. Next is it is open source. Why open source? It is easily available. Actually, this point is in the view of programming that means you can use C, C++ for this and this software are nothing but the open source software hence the point is come over here. Next is application it is used in zip and in pdf so both the things or the both the format contains text or program we all are aware or familiar with pdf so that is nothing but comes under LZ77. And last one is one can write the program for LZ77 in C++. I already told you it is open source. So whatever the open source softwares are present in that you can write down the program easily for the LZ77. So these are the few points of the comparison of LZ77 with LZ78. Now move towards LZ78. First is it is known as LZ78 and it is also based on the dictionary that means it is also dictionary based technique now why it is known as the dictionary based technique again in the lz78 we have seen this example the string of characters are given i already told you both the techniques are comes under the lossless hence we must have to do the compression on the string of the characters in terms of text or program so this is the given code and yes with the help of the given code itself the dictionary of a given code itself we require to do the encoding with lz78 technique so again it is dictionary based dictionary means provided input second point is it works on the future data now try to understand in the LZ77, we told that it will work on the past data, but in the LZ78, we try to write that it will work on the future data. How? Always, the first character will be my present data, and I will try to enter the first character in the table. After that, whatever string of a character will remain, that will be my future string or that will be the future characters why because after a what will be there that i don't know by observing the output table but yes after a what is present that will be considered completely as a new entry in the output table and hence b which is present after a will be known as future data c which is present after b is known as future data so the next every data which is present in the string or every character which is present in the string is known as the future data see the flow of lz77 is like this this is the present data this is the future data but if you try to remember the flow of 77 that is what you require to slide the data this is the present data after slide it it will become past data so try to understand in the lz77 we try to work on the past data while in the lz78 we try to work on what future data so it works on the future data third one is it is faster than lz77 because we just require to draw a table once the table will be drawn 
we are not require any much more time to update continuously in the form of picture that particular algorithm and hence we are not required a lot of time which is already required in lz77 so it is faster than that of lz77 the output of lz78 is i comma c i represent index and c represent cold words so here also you can observe instead of write down the three output that means three numbers to encode the data in the olc form we just require to use the two outputs in form of index and code word and hence it is faster here also you can add up one more point so this is also open source why open source because one can write a program in c++ or any that software which is easily available in the open source so here also we can write a program for the lz78 in c c++ java and so on so this is also known as the open source technique and application of lz78 is nothing but in the field of information technology or information theory such as in random number so try to understand here along with the string of the characters you can also try to represent that characters in the form of using some symbolic representation in the form of some symbols in the form of some numbers so hence the field of information theory is the application for lz78 and pdf will be the application for lz77 so these are few points on which you can easily work by comparing the two examples in between lz77 and lz78 thank you so much for watching this video stay tuned with ikira and subscribe our channel